The material that you're about to listen to and engage with came from our 2017 Missiology Lectures when myself, along with my colleague Johnny Ramirez Johnson, said we need to do this next 2017 Missiology Lectures on this topic of race theology mission. And we invited Dr. Love Seacrest to engage with us in that process. We wanted to explore the challenging questions regarding racism and ethnocentrism and xenophobia and all of those issues from the perspective of world Christianity with regard to how these realities have existed in many parts of the world and also as part of the colonial mission endeavors. It is fascinating to think that the realities we were talking about are not the experiences of one individual or even one society. We're talking about whiteness as a way of defining the world. And the conference and the conference presenters address time and again this epistemology, this way of making meaning. It has also been described as colonization and post-colonization. The question is not, it's not about guilt, it's about engagement. It's about what are we going to do with what we have inherited. Uh, so the fact that we're having the conversation should not point a finger at you as a listener or viewer. But these are hard conversations. Um, the conversation about race is one that has been deferred for so long and so often, over and over again, as soon as we get close to having a meaningful conversation about race, um, we recoil from the pain of it. And so in our lectures, there are you'll see some of that pain emerge. You'll see some people who have long experienced racism uh, express and, de and declare and name experiences that they um, have had that have been deeply formative, deformative even. So this conversation is not a pretty one, but we're having it. As observers, as uh, listeners, you will be engaging, and we invite you to invite the Holy Spirit. The three of us pray a lot about this series. Mm -hmm. We humbly submitted to God and pleaded for God's mercy to lead us. We are feeble and combined. We are imperfect, and we have prayed that the Lord will fill the gaps. And the conversation is only a starter. It is in your hands. It is in your community. It is in your family. And most importantly, it is on your knees. Mm. Andrew, I want to give you the uh, opportunity to uh, comment on any on the response that you got from Aaron. Yes, that it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it, very artistically done, nicely put together, thoughtful. Uh, the piece of the puzzle that hit home uh, for, for me at a very visceral level was the piece uh, of of it, if where the demon is saying, if you can uh, entrench white folks in a sort of circularity of self, they will be moved out of connection to the love of the enemy, who in this case would be the father. And there is something beautiful about uh, recognizing uh, that you are simply human uh, that allows you to... Uh, accept uh, grace as a, an extreme gift, uh, to be a dog at the table, to, to, to get the crumbs, you know, kind of, I don't, I don't care what you call me, Jesus, as long as you call me. So I, I thought that was really uh, special, really powerful, uh, really nicely put together. So thank you so much. Well, I've gotten a few uh, questions here, and... <laughs> Uh, they're really all over the map, so I don't have an opportunity to uh, kind of describe themes. Um, here's one that uh, that seems to 
uh, key off of the title. If the end of mission is the decentering of whiteness, wouldn't that also be the end of Christianity? If the end of mission, right, that's the, the title. If the end of mission is the decentering of whiteness, wouldn't that also be the end of Christianity? Uh, I'm misunderstanding whether the question is asking if Christianity would be ended by whiteness being decentered or if Let me mission is... It, so in other words, number one, mission was in quotation marks uh, in, in, the, in the title. Uh, so I'm, I'm not by any means suggesting that Christians do not uh, have... That's just a text. Oh. Let me... Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry? The, those quotes were not on your title. Oh, the quotation marks oh. weren't on it. Oh. <laughs> let me... You know what, Andrew? Let me uh, read more of the question, because that might help, I think. Um, if whiteness is geneolo genealogically rooted in Christian supersessionism... It would seem that to truly dissenter whiteness would require a negation of Christianity, at least in its materially existing form. So tearing down the idol is good, but what ends does that serve if the idol-producing factory remains intact? And here's the end that was probably the most helpful thing. Perhaps we need the Jews to truly show us how to decenter mission. That's good. That's where I would recommend Mark Kinzer's book uh, and my conversations with him about bilateral ecclesiology and solidarity with Israel. In other words, that if we encourage uh, uh, or require, uh, by Gentile Christians, we require uh, Jewish brothers and sisters who are part of our congregations to sort of live like Gentiles or encourage uh, that, that, that adherence to Torah is works righteousness or whatever the case might be, that we are removing what distinguishes uh, uh, in, in a uh, uh, religious, in a particular, in, a, in, a, in the sense of a people, and, and then uh, the, the assimilation of Judaism to Christianity, which is supersessionism, mirrors the assimilation of black bodies to whiteness. Aaron, would you like to jump in on that one? No, <laughs> we can leave that one alone. Okay. Um, here's one, and this uh, this is a response. If it, I don't know if it's if it, I, can, I can do this because I'm I got the mic, don't I? Um, <laughs> um, I want to read the comment, the question for this um, for your your uh, presentation, but there's a previous one in the same um, stream. It was from Thursday, but it, they, they, they connect in some way. So I want to get both of them out here. Um, this is uh, directly to Aaron. Isn't Aaron white? Why is she saying they? Is Trayvon Martin really a good example or is it knee jerk? Is there anyone here to defend whites? Sounds like prejudice if all whites are all privileged and all so stupid. Right, so, uh, so I, what might have been missed, right, is that I was reading a letter not my own, right? Uh, so I'm talking about they, talking about me. Um, so let me presume to talk about white people and evangelicals because I am one. Um, and I claim that title, and we can talk about whether we should or not. Um, but I am seen as white and... Uh, and I think that the demonic does take us for fools. Um, I, I wasn't being, and I'm, I, I should say this, and I don't know if you're aware of Michelle Alexander and the new Jim Crow, and part of what Alexander has um, come to terms with is that there's a spirituality about the ravages of race and violence in this country. And she doesn't mean that and I don't think that Du Bois meant that in some kind of ethereal, hyper-safe, spiritualized way. Um, I believe the demonic is real. So I don't think that this is baloney, that the New Testament is just like, well, they didn't really know what they're talking about. Um, and that the spiritual is physical. I don't believe there's a separation of those, right? So, so... 
So when I'm talking, I think the demonic, however we understand it, the demonic does want to devour us. I mean, it lives and feeds off of our activities and our very bodies. It lives off our institutions. So I understand some of what Alexander to be trying to do is to say, cast out the demon, right? Don't just pretend it's about cleaning up the house of law because that's my... That's my objection to limiting our imagination to keep going back to the civil rights movement. I don't know if you know this, but we are more segregated now. We are more segregated now in where we live, where we go to school, who we work with, who our friends are than we were in 1970. So hello, it didn't work. But what a, what a triumph for the demonic, right? that we would look back to that and go, gosh, if we could only have 1968 back. No. As Christians, we should know that there is good in that, there is a purpose in that, but there is also a demonic casting out that must happen. It must begin with us. We must begin to address that in our own churches, in our own lives, in our habits of heart and mind and what we want. And if we don't do that, I, I just think we, I mean, I was writing it from the demon's perspective, right? In general, I think we don't actually believe in the demonic. We don't take seriously. And I find that ironic when we talk about race, because if there's any place that I know the demonic exists, it is the more I know about how racist functions, right? I mean, to listen to Willie Jennings speak and to go, that is the demonic. The prince of darkness who owns this world, right? I mean, if you want to go into John and all that, right? There's a reason we have those texts. So yep. that's my sorry. Thank you so much. I was just, I was just channeling Andrew because everybody else got to preach, you know? Andrew, I'm going um, I'm, to... I, I want to put the second part of this question because they're, they're dealing with the same tough issues. And I... Um, you repeat it? Yeah, no, I'm going to give you a different version okay. of it, though. And it's, to, it's under the category of reverse racism. Like, this may strike some yeah. as reverse racism. Uh, that, see, that's the... Mm -hmm. that's the and, and Aaron chose to engage it from the perspective of deception. Right. But how would you engage that? Well, like, that problem? Th that's great. So uh, it, it's important to distinguish... Uh, language of white particularity from whiteness. It's important to distinguish individuality from systems. And again, that is not a self-justifying move. It's a move to say that multiple times in the paper, I tried to signal not a uh, all white people are X, but rather that a focus on justifying ourselves and our intentions is antithetical to the gospel, or it participates with the demonic. So in other words, when a person of color utilizes symbols of, uh, for instance, uh, black pride or black lives matter or whatever the, uh, the, the linguistic formulation might be, it is a statement of resistance against dehumanizing forces that categorize people according to a racialized logic. So decentering whiteness does not, it's not the same move. You're talking to, when you're talking to whiteness or about whiteness as the, as the demon is doing in Aaron's paper, uh, uh, you are speaking about a system of power, a structure that had to be learned. Uh, as, as Jennings mentioned last night, it is, maturity. It is progress, the myth of human progress. And so I was trying to carefully distinguish those things in the paper, but unfortunately, many times it feels like white folks cannot hear words about whiteness or white privilege or whatever the case might be without just being so hurt personally. There's this sense of white fragility where it's sort of like, you, you know, nobody was looking at you one-on-one -on -one and saying, I think that everything about you is evil, racist, and disgusting. No, we're talking about a system and structure here that in which uh, 
that historically we, we've encapsulated the world in this way of, of seeing things and that needs to be called idolatry. It needs to be called demonic, right? Like anything less is not truthful, it's not honest, and it's not prophetic. Yeah. So, okay, so I'll say two quick things. One is... Um, Part of my gentle pushback against Andrew that's in my paper is I'm not sure that decentering whiteness is a good idea. Because I, I think it sometimes presumes, gives whiteness too much, right? Um, so that I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of trying to play with that while still recognizing whiteness. This is our double bind, right? When I say that, I'm almost forced into a corner, right? Because now I'm denying the power of whiteness, right? Um, and if I do that, I've excluded myself from a certain kind of conversation. The other thing I want to say about reverse racism is I have a white son. Um, and I, the other alternative was actually to write a letter to him. Because my son, um, at 10, 11, 12 years old, that's when a lot, he, he began to hear in social media about white boys, white men. At 10 or 11 or 12 years old, this also makes not a lot of sense to him because a lot of his friends uh, are not white. Um, and some are, some aren't, right? But he thinks he's beyond racism, right? Bless him. <laughs> but, what he's picking, but what he's picking up is that something about him is terribly wrong. Yeah. And at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, Okay, is he privileged? Yeah, but does he get that? No. How is he going to get that, right? How, how can his 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old brain get that? But what he hears is that there's something about which he cannot change, right? I mean, black folk and uh, brown folk understand this, right? But I'm a mother who's watching my son take this in. Yeah. And that's part of why I'm writing this to say, I don't want my son to be defined by whiteness. I don't want his relationships, his loves, his passions to be defined by whiteness. I don't want him to be seen as white, not in that way. And I would give anything for him to have a different life. Just like September Penn, who's the woman I was talking about, who told her story, just like September doesn't want to have to worry about her sons walking to the store, right? Yeah. And that's what worries me about whiteness as a mother. Um, and I'm married to a big white guy too. So, I mean, there's that. I'm not as worried about him, right? But I worry a lot about young white boys as well as September's black boys, as well as Jillian Branham's nephews, right? I mean, I, I like... So that's what, what, why whiteness disturbs me and why I feel like it's got us in this double bind. We don't know how to break out of a recognition of its power and acknowledging it, right? This is what I thought was genius about what Jonathan was trying to do in his paper, right? He's saying out of the fertility of the past, Aquinas says, even God does not change the past. God redeems the past. God makes a new creation out of crap. That's good. And that's what we have to figure out how to do. Yeah. And whiteness constrains that yeah. and says you cannot imagine something beyond what I created in the 1400s. Mm. And damn you if you do. Mm.